Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Something is happening in the National Assembly and the Senate, and this is something that should worry Kenyans, because if it is not checked, it is going to plunge this nation into economic catastrophe. Over the past two months, our parliament has failed us. They have reversed two court decisions that is really going to impact Kenya and our pockets very negatively. First was the court order that had uh, declared the housing levy unconstitutional. And the majority leader, Kimani Chungwa, reintroduced a bill in parliament that recommended this housing levy and because of their tyranny of numbers, the government passed that housing levy bill without amendments from the opposition. And it is now operational. The, the civil servants are being deducted some money, and you know the impact of this. Number two is the declaration by our courts that the over 50 chief administrative secretaries that had been appointed by William Ruto was very unconstitutional. And it was brought back to parliament. And JLAC, the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, approved the reintroduction of the positions of the CSS. And one more thing about it that is worrying is that they removed the clause that was capping the number at 22 because this was one of the arguments from the law society of kenya and the people who went to court they said that william ruto appointed mostly persons from the kalenjin and the kikuyu community it it, it did not really capture the image of uh, the nation and then it was very discriminatory and it, it, it was going to, to, to just make William Ruto's cabinet be very bloated. So when it was brought back to parliament, the JLAC committee removed that clause that was capping it at 22 so that William Ruto now has a, bl a blank check. He can decide to appoint 200 chief administrative secretaries and there is nothing we can do. Their salary is worrying, and I want us to do some two headlines so that you understand what I mean. Reveal chief administrative secretaries and election losers to earn more than our MPs. That is the first headline. The second headline that I want us to look at is it will cost the taxpayer 10 million Kenya shillings a year to keep a chief administrative secretary in office. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what it says. It says that it will cost the taxpayer at least 9.4 million Kenya shillings per year to pay a chief administrative secretary, adding to the country's wage bill, according to the Salaries and Remuneration Commission job evaluation. The remuneration, which excludes benefits such as daily subsistence allowances for local and foreign travel, transport, medical, pension, group life insurance, group personal accident, car, loan, and mortgage, amounts to about 46.8 million over a chief administrative uh, secretary's five-year service. The details come from the Salaries and Remuneration Commission job evaluation data obtained from the Public Service Commission. Now, listen to this. The job evaluation report shows that the gross monthly salary of a chief administrative secretary is capped at 780,000 Kenya shillings, which is higher than the 710,000 Kenya shillings and MP pockets every month. And it includes 459,000 basic salary 
165,000 house allowance and 155,000 salary market adjustment. When I read that, number one, they are going to earn more than our members of parliament, people who we elected. And that is why it says election, election losers, people we, are, we rejected on the ballot, will be appointed as chief administrative secretaries and they will be earning more. Their house allowance is um, 165,000. And the other day I did a video when Kithure Kindiki did an made an impromptu visit to Kero, uh, that was Nyamira police station and ended up in their residential places. Mud wall, mud thatched houses and walls that have collapsed, very dilapidated conditions. Our policemen who are working hard to maintain law and order do not have, you know, houses. Yet these people are being given money. I want us to discuss this further, ladies and gentlemen. And if you are watching us for the first time, allow me to request you to subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell to allow YouTube to notify you whenever we release a video like this. Please give this video a thumbs up and help us share our videos if you can. To all our subscribers and our supporters, Thank you very much. I don't take it for granted. Ladies and gentlemen, do you remember Rigedi Geshagwa and the entire Kenya Kwanza Brigade have continued to tell us that they inherited empty coffers? And they say that sometimes towards election, Uhuru Kenyatta carried money in, in, in boxes, stuffed in boxes, and they don't know where the money went. They are yet to inform a commission to investigate this. And I wonder whether whatever they are doing corroborates whatever they are saying. Because actions will always speak louder than words. If you understand that you inherited empty coffers, then how do you still appoint chief administrative secretaries? Just one is getting over 700,000 Kenya shillings. I mean, and now... You don't have a capped number. You can appoint as many as you can. If just one gets 780,000, ladies and gentlemen, that is close to a million, a million because it is past 500,000. If we had to round it off, then we would round it off to a million because it is past 500,000 Kenya shillings. In an economy that they are claiming there's no money, in an economy where doctors are on strike because they want some salary increment. In an economy where teachers are crying because they want salary increment. In an economy where county governments are not receiving their allocation on time and they continue to cry, yet William Ruto still wants to appoint many people into the cabinet. And I wonder, where are we headed as a country, ladies and gentlemen? And then someone would ask, and let us have a very candid discussion about this. Don't you believe this is duplication of duties? We already have cabinet secretaries and then permanent secretaries, the PSS. From the time William Ruto ascended to power, please tell me anything that has gone wrong that can be you know, pointed to the fact that we didn't have chief administrative secretaries and that's why things went wrong. Do you think there is something that the CSS will be doing without which, if they don't do, then the government will collapse? Because I believe that the roles in a docket can easily be handled, handled by the CS and the PS. They already have their secretaries. We employ drivers and security. We employ expertise in those, of, in those offices. Why then do we add this? Tell me. Why do, why do we add this? Because ever since we have ascended to power, you cannot tell me that, for example, Keture Kendike has suffered because he does not have a, a, a CS, CAS in that office. They are basically the assistant ministers in the old constitution. This is simply a duplicate of duties. And if you ask me, the country is in a wrong trajectory. I don't know whether this is what Ndi, who is the 
chair of the council of Econ chair of the economic council is advising William Ruto to do we promised hustlers that we were going to look into their affairs and even if you look at the people who have been appointed into such offices people like Kidero, Millicent Omanga, Margaret Wanjiru, Denis Itumbi, those are not hustlers if you ask me. This is a way and a ploy to reward Ruto's cronies. Those who supported him and lost in the elections, they are all going to be put in one basket to take taxpayers' money for nothing. Already, you can see that our ministers are not performing. We are selling, we are being sold to fake fertilizers. The doctors are on strike and what the, the, the CS is doing is to threaten them. So we are adding a bunch of other irresponsible people into this government to double our problems. William Ruto is not serious. We are not serious as a country because this is not the time. We are burdening Kenyans for nothing. No wonder they have proposed that they want to tax basic commodities like milk and sugar because they need more money to maintain these offices. In an environment where corruption is the end of the day, they, they, they just yesterday, it was found out that Kithuri Kendiki's office is the most corrupt. And it's not only that docket, not the interior ministry alone. There's a lot of corruption, massive corruption in the lands ministry, wherever you go. So we are adding more to this, yet our money is not being put to prudent use. When you look at all this and you try to complain, there are people who have been indoctrinated to believe that this government is theirs. There are people from Mount Kenya who will not stomach any criticism of the government. They are crying fall of the avocado levies, they are crying fall of, of, of uh, unfinished projects in that area. Yet, when William Ruto appoints so many cabinet, a uh, bloated cabinet and you complain, then they start complaining that you want to sabotage William Samuel Ruto. This is unacceptable and Kenyans must rise up and start asking questions. The more we continue to sleep, one day we will wake up and find that Kenya has been sold. I want to wait and see whether William Ruto will, will include any hustler here. And that is why we have a budget that is running into trillions of shillings because we are maintaining unnecessary offices. What is a CAS going to do that cannot be done if he's not around, earning more than the members of parliament? And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is my take that our parliamentarians are failing us. It is my take that William Ruto is not considerate to Kenyans. It is my take that we are on a very wrong trajectory. This is just unbelievable. And that is my take.